In this video, we're going to have a brief review of titration. Titration was a concept that you saw in grade 11 for the most part. And it's a technique that's often used in chemistry to figure out concentrations of something that we may, we may not know the concentration of. And so it has a very fancy setup, or it looks kind of fancy. This is our setup over here. Uh, as you can see, there's this little tool called the burette. And um, there's also another uh, piece of lab equipment that we call an Erlenmeyer flask. And so the idea is that within the Erlenmeyer flask, we put um, a substance with unknown concentration. So we don't know its concentration. For example, it might be an acid. It might be some HCl. Um, so it might be some HCl with an unknown molarity. For example, it doesn't have to be HCl. It could be some other acid or some other substance. Um, so we put that in the Erlenmeyer flask. And then in the burette, this fancy piece of glassware over here, we put something called a titrant. The titrant is a substance that you know the concentration of. So for example, it might be, I don't know, two mole per liter sodium hydroxide. And what you do is you essentially add this titrant that you know the concentration of to your uh, sample until a reaction happens. And you essentially figure out how much of this titrant did you have to add to get a reaction in the sample and using your knowledge of how much you had to add in terms of volume and stoichiometry you can then figure out what the mystery um, molarity of the acid was and the reason we have this fancy setup is because it's very very um, sensitive these reactions are very sensitive and so um, you know an extra drop here or not enough drops of the titrant will lead you to either either overestimating or underestimating the molarity of your sample and you want to be as as accurate and precise as possible so the burette allows you to be very precise um, you can essentially add the substance drop by drop by drop um, or you could add it as a longer stream if you want but you can add drop by drop by drop so you can be as accurate and precise as possible. Um, and so this is the, again, the setup. You put your unknown, you put your substance of unknown concentration in the flask. You put your substance of known concentration in the burette. Um, the substance of known concentration is called the titrant. Um, another word for the substance of unknown concentration, we sometimes call it the titrand. Titrand. To uh, hold up the burette, you put it on a retort stand with a burette clamp, and so it just holds it in place. And then to control the flow of the uh, titrant, there's this thing called a stopcock that you can turn to let things through drop by drop or using a stream. The other thing I, I didn't mention yet, which is important to also mention, is that in addition to putting the substance of unknown concentration in the flask, you need to also put an indicator. Because many of these reactions that we do for titrations in grade 11 and 12 are very boring. They, they don't have much to indicate that a reaction actually happened um, because they're acid-base reactions oftentimes. And so we add a few drops of indicator to change color to let us know when the reaction is actually completed. So it sort of looks like this. You take some of your unknown substance using a pipette just to be very precise, put it into your flask. You then add a few drops of your indicator, two or three drops, depending on what the um, procedure calls for. Um, and the, you won't see a color change right away for many of them. You'll just see, you won't even realize it's there. Then you fill up your burette with some of the titrant, the stuff of known concentration, and you start adding your drops of the uh, titrant. And then when you get your color change, that's when you know to stop the titration and that all of your substance is reacted. And essentially, you can figure out how much of the uh, known stuff you added by just looking at the initial volume and the final volume and finding the difference between them. So um, whatever this difference is, this is how much of the titrant you added to your acid to get a, um, to get a, a reaction. And, and once you know that volume, you can do some stoichiometry calculations to figure out what your unknown concentration must have been. So the idea is that, um, oh, and another word I forgot to mention as well, let me just add this in. There's a lot of terminology for this uh, this particular unit. Um, titrand, another word for that, you can also call it the analyte. It is a thing you're analyzing. So you can call it the analyte as well. So those are all different terms that you might use for the same thing oftentimes. And that's just something you have to get used to in, in chemistry or in a lot of science disciplines. So what is the purpose of titration? 
it's really to do a variety of things. You, you could use it to find the, um, the concentration of an analyte or a titrand, something you don't know the concentration of. You can use it to maybe find pH or pOH. You can use it to determine the Ka or the Kb. Um, and so we're going to take a look at a variety of different scenarios that you can use titration for. But our primary focus will be on figuring out the concentration of an analyte. Um, and again, we can also use it for figuring out pH, pOH, or Ka and Kb as well of, of various substances. Um, so that is just a general introduction to titration. Um, it was a pretty quick one because you've seen this in grade 11. There's also a grade 11 uh, review video that you can go watch included in your calendar or wherever your teacher keeps the resources um, that goes over titration at the grade 11 level. And we're actually going to start with that as well. We're going to do some calculations for titration at the grade 11 level um, just to have a brief overview of what that titration looks like. Um, and we're also going to take a look at a titration curve at the grade 11 level. Um, so in grade 11, when you did your titrations, they were strong acid, strong base titrations. And that's what we're going to start this part of the unit with. Strong acid, strong base titrations as a quick overview of what a titration is. And then after that, once we understand this and have reviewed this sufficiently, you're going to go and you're going to start doing titrations at the grade 12 level, which is no longer strong and strong, but instead you might have strong, a strong base weak acid titration or a weak base strong acid titration. So that's what the grade 12 style titration looks like, whereas grade 11 was strong and strong. So in the next video, we're going to do an example of a grade 11 style titration, a strong acid titration with a strong base.